So um, I can speak for 20 minutes, or I can end at 9.55. No, I can't even end at 9.55, so I'll speak for 20 minutes. Uh, I want to cover a lot of material. Uh, let's see how much of that I uh, succeed. Um, I don't know uh, anything uh, about cyber. Uh, I told that to the conference organizers. They said, fine, you'll speak about AI, so that's what I'll do. Um, the uh, um, starting point is, I don't know if you've heard, but AI is really great stuff. I uh, won't insult your intelligence by telling you about self-driving cars and AlphaGo and cyber applications. But, uh, but perhaps it's worth uh, pointing you to a resource that you might find inter interesting, something called the AI Index. It's something that I started at Stanford about three years ago and still share. Uh, the, uh, you can go to AIindex.org and find two annual reports. The third one will come out, and each of them has, uh, you know, 100 pages with lots of graphs uh, and such as this. They tra uh, we track both the volumetric data, how much is happening, and to the extent that you can measure the technological progress. This is an example of the latter. So we all know about ImageNet, which until recently was the standard benchmark for um, computer vision. That was uh, arguably solved away in 2015, 2016, um, and no longer is viewed as the, uh, uh, an interesting benchmark to track. Uh, similarly, in natural language, uh, Squad out of Stanford was uh, a, uh, the image net of uh, question answering. Um, that was solved away in 2017. Uh, that's Squad 1.1. Squad 2.0 was solved away this year. Um, uh, this is a partial list of tasks on which computers purportedly uh, met or exceeded human performance, uh, including the ImageNet and the Squad, which I mentioned. How did we get there? Now it gets a little more uh, interesting. Um, those of you are uh, uh, as old as me, know that in the 1980s, AI was as popular as it is today, but the discourse was very different. It was all about knowledge representation. KR stands for knowledge representation. Hand codified, you, you went to the doctor, you extracted from the doctor her knowledge of diseases, you codified it in some form, you had a rules-based system, you cranked the wheel, and out came a disease regarding a particular patient. That did not uh, perform as advertised, and we went into a period we call the AI winter, where you couldn't admit you were doing AI even if you were. And then we pivoted to the area of machine learning, really statistics, today of course dominated by deep learning, uh, enabling many of successes. And in fact, when you go back to that list of successes, you see that uh, the bulk of them, certainly in years, were really fueled by successive uh, neural nets. So um, you can also view it, uh, again, from the AI index. This is attendance in the major AI conferences. Uh, back in the 80s, AI was, again, very popular, but uh, dominated by the two conferences, HKI and AAAI, the general purpose AI conferences, were sold out, standing room only, um, and uh, today still not trivial. Uh, I think both of them uh, are reaching about 2,000 people uh, e each year, which is uh, not a small number for an academic conference, but definitely eclipsed by the conferences that are dedicated to machine learning, like NeurIPS, ICML, ICLR, and even the vision and language conferences, like CVPR and the ACL, uh, are in, 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 in to a large extent uh, dominated or certainly st strongly influenced by machine learning and deep learning. So there has been the change and that really is what enabled uh, the successes and uh, nothing I'm about to say should, uh, uh, should send the message that these successes aren't real and justified. I don't think we're heading another AI winter, but there's a but. And this uh, is an illustration of the but. Take the, any sentence that uh, your five-year-old uh, can understand. Danny hit me at school, so I hit him back, but the teacher only saw me hitting him, so she punished me. It's not fair. This is something that any kid understands. No machine's going to come close to understanding it. 
no matter how you define understanding. And how do we understand this, intuitively speaking? We understand there's a timeline, there's events that take place in time, there are people, the people take action, there's causation, some things cause other things, uh, there's beliefs, people, some people know things, some people don't, some people know they don't, and so on and so forth. No machine can come close to uh, embracing these concepts today. If you go back to the AI community and focus in for a moment about language technologies, natural language understanding, natural language generation, um, people realize this. And so there's a plethora of new data sets and challenges that emerges that cast doubt on the successes of systems such as those, uh, such as BERT and ELMO and GPT, if you know these systems, that have shown so much deservedly, uh, uh, you know, true success uh, on various tasks, uh, but um, the claim is haven't really solved the problems. I'll give you an example. Uh, glue, which now, Glue 2.0 is called Super Glue. It's um, a set of uh, nine, then six. Now it's going to expand again tasks. I'll give you an example of one of them. And uh, um, the Allen Institute, I have to give them credit for also pushing the envelope, in particular, put, putting a finger on where limitations lie and data sets that show those limitations. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, the Winograd schema, this is something that Terry Winograd, uh, who retired from Stanford a few years ago, gave an example back in his thesis in 1972, and then Hector Levesque, uh, a leading uh, AI academic, also retired recently in Toronto, took and created 700 examples of those. And you can look at the example of these. There are, this is really a, pr uh, a pronoun uh, uh, disambiguation, a co-reference issue. Uh, you have sentences that differ every so slightly uh, and which changes completely the, the reference. If you take the original example, you see that the city councilmen refused the demonstrators a permit because they feared violence, and the second sentence exactly the same is because they advocated violence. You simply change feared to advocated. All current techniques will stumble on this uh, because they really look at surface pattern matching. I'll get to that in a moment. And, um, and, and, and so there's a data set that, uh, uh, of such sentences, not huge, several hundred. Uh, and this is state of the art. Um, it's actually a little better. I need to update the slide. Uh, there's something re that just came out like two weeks ago that uh, approaches 70, or actually 71% um, F1 score. Uh, but uh, anyway, far from human performance. Different, the second example, and there are dozens of these, by the way. Um, this is from Allen Institute. Uh, it's uh, a data set that captures uh, simple uh, scientific processes, um, uh, natural processes. This is photosynthesis or something similar. Uh, they crowdsourced a verbal description of the, of the processes. You can, each sentence is a stage in the process. And uh, the question is very simple. Look at the states before and each every such step in the process and tell me each ingredient where they are. State of the art uh, is uh, very poor. Um, like I say, many such examples. The community realizes and, and the, the, the general message here is successes of AI have really been phenomenal, but we're very far from capturing anything uh, approaches human intelligence, and we should be dangerous about. Uh, da we should be careful about um, uh, ext over extrapolation here. Uh, this is a reconstruction of a cartoon I remember from my childhood. Can't find the original. Where you see a kid stand, uh, so looking at the stars through a telescope, but standing on a little chair to get closer. Uh, that I think is a good metaphor for where we are with AI today. Um, what is missing fundamentally is structured knowledge and the d distinction between syntax and semantics. And what do we mean by that? When we speak about structure, we speak about it's not an accident that we humans developed language several dozens of thousands of years ago and those correlated with the intelligence that we have. We are able to, uh, to describe, sim to put forward symbols that point to something in the world. We can, uh, like time points, 
we can look at relations among those symbols. For example, a timeline, it's a relation among the time points that have things like a before, or if you want to look metrically, distance relation between time points. And we understand this, uh, and then we look for much more, at much more complicated, an event, by the way, is another relation. It's a relation between two time points and an event type, and potentially other arguments. Then we have higher order relations like causation, which is a relation between events, which as I said, itself is a relation. And very importantly, we take very simple things like the ones I said, and using small number, of, a very limited notation, construct arbitrary uh, complicated knowledge structures using, uh, using connectives and uh, quantifiers and modal operators. And so we can in very compactly represent something very complicated. And that seems intimately tied to what intelligence is and it's not reflected in current technology. The second thing is uh, differentiating between a span of text, for example, the doctor administered medicine. You can point to the span of text and say, here it is, versus something it refers to. There's an object called a doctor, there's an object called a, a med uh, the, uh, medicine uh, that maybe exists in a database, maybe uh, exists elsewhere. And that separation is key to understand making sense of things. Why do we care about these things? Uh, for two reasons, really. Fundament fundamentally, data models and algorithms. If we want a data model that makes sense, that's compact, and that we can intuitively understand, um, I don't know any other way. And perhaps key is algorithmics. Suppose you... Um, care about nothing but neural nets. You believe the world begins and ends with differential manifolds. You still need to populate the rows and columns of your matrix with something. Where will those features come from? They come from how you model the data. And even more to the point, when you train your models, we know today that you can't train neural nets with some, without some hints, which we call inductive bias. Where will that come from? Again, from the data models. Finally, uh, we don't think, I don't think, that any rational person thinks that we will machine learn addition and subtraction. HP calculators 50 years ago could do that. Let's just use that. Uh, we don't think we will learn this, uh, how to do temporal constraint propagation. They're discrete algorithms, efficient, available, and understandable. Let's use them. So if we go back to a historical context, back in the 80s, we had lots of, uh, well, lots of semantics, very little data. We pivoted to lots of data, very little semantics. The future, if we want to make progress, has to be a synthesis of the two. And the question is, where will that come from? Where will we get those semantics and syntax? I mean, those semantics and structure. Now, um, there, will, uh, there are those today, and I've spoken to them, um, who um, believe we'll get it for free from neural nets. It'll just emerge. Um, let's look at where it might emerge. This is a standard architecture of an encoder-decoder, uh, and uh, where is semantics? If it's anything, it will be in the parameters of the model you've learned and in the embedding space. Um, you know, this is a judgment call, but does one really believe that you'll, you'll automatically get something like arithmetic, structure of time there? I don't think even uh, what I call a triple N, a neural net Nazi, would, would argue this. So um, if you look specifically at language, this is the most basic uh, sort of neural net architectural model, the recursive neural net. Um, and so you feed it and it uh, processes these words, sometimes less than words, but let's say words one at a time. And What's happening here? You start with uh, a vector which is, say, 768 long, and you encode in it the uh, uh, word I, which is fine, and then the word I ran before you long it, the same poor vector needs to encode the whole sentence. Um, and again, judgment call, but seems uh, uh, implausible that you'd be able to, to, to squish into a puny little vector arbitrarily complicated semantics. Um, of course, these are very simple models, but if you look at state-of-the-art models, these are examples of hierarchical neural nets. Uh, I think the, uh, the point still stands. Now, we should be careful. Uh, neural nets have surprised everybody about how successful they've been, so we'd be, uh, and they do capture interesting linguistic phenomena. But 
My bit is that you need they're a necessary condition, not a, a, uh, a sufficient condition. And the question is then, if they're not sufficient, what's missing? And to me, the answer is just obvious. Uh, it's been there all along. That's what AI did in the 80s, knowledge representation. The question is how to marry the advantages of knowledge representation with the indispensable advantages of neural nets. And uh, the two parts to it, one is I told you uh, we care about structured knowledge because of the data modeling and because of the algorithmics. Uh, they're both non-trivial. The algorithmics is a harder question and there's, uh, the jury, the, there's a bunch of experiments out there that are interesting. It'll take more than 18 minutes to discuss that, so I won't. Um, I'll just summarize. These are the main points I wanted to say. Nothing I, sh I said should occlude the, uh, the, the realization that AI is meaningful, successful, and here to stay. We're very far from uh, full human intelligence. Uh, knowledge representation is something we have to bring back to the table if we want to be successful. Harmonizing it with neural nets is non-trivial, but fascinating and doable. Makes an interesting time for AI. And if there's one uh, image to leave you with, it's this. Thank you very much.